All right, let's look at some exam techniques, shall we? So, something I'm sure you'll end up drawing in your exam, probably both diagrams to be honest, is a shift of aggregate demand and a shift of aggregate supply, both of which will probably form the heart of your analysis. In which case, you need to know how to talk about these effects very carefully, and you need to make sure they explain the effects on the macroeconomic indicators with crisp, concise and clear detail. So, let's have a look at both shifts. Shifts of aggregate demand and shifts of aggregate supply. Right, aggregate demand shifts to the right for a whole host of reasons which doesn't really matter. So, for some reason, aggregate demand shifts to the right. We then need to analyse the effect on the four key macroeconomic variables, of which we have growth, employment, inflation and trade position. We need to be able to do all four from one diagram. So, from one diagram, what's going on? to these four objectives when aggregate demand shifts to the right. Well, we can see on the diagram there is going to be an increase in growth, isn't there? Real GDP increases from Y1 to Y2. So growth in the economy increases. Unemployment in the economy is going to decrease because of an increase in growth. I'm going to explain why in a second. Inflation, as you can see from the diagram, is going to increase. Prices, the price level increase from P1 to P2. And the trade position is actually going to worsen. It's no good just stating those four. So many students just state these things and think, yeah, done it, happy. No, you will be capped. You won't score very many marks for doing that. You need to explain why exactly these things are happening. So let's go through one by one. Why does growth increase? Growth increases because firms react to this increase in demand by producing more goods and services. There is more demand out there in the economy, there is a greater incentive for firms to produce more goods and services to meet that extra demand. Therefore, output in the economy increases, therefore there is an increase in real GDP. That's how you need to explain it. Learn that properly. Unemployment decreases. Unemployment and growth are very much linked together. Whatever happens to growth, you can then make a link to what's going to happen to unemployment. So whenever growth increases, unemployment falls. Because labour is a derived demand. Remember from my video um, on unemployment that labour is a derived demand. Derived from the demand for goods and services, which is what growth is. So when growth increases, there is greater demand for goods and services. When there is a greater demand for goods and services, there is a greater demand for labour to produce those goods and services. So therefore, the demand for labour increases, which then reduces unemployment. That's how you need to explain that. That is like properly awesome analysis. You say that, you're going, to, you're going to sound amazing, you're going to look amazing in your exam. Okay? So, that's unemployment. Inflation. It's no good just saying there is an increase in demand pull inflation. That's not good enough. Why is there an increase in demand pull inflation? Well now, as um, there is more demand in the economy, more growth, there is more pressure put on the existing factors of production in the economy. Therefore, the price of those factors of production is going to increase. So, the existing factors of production might be land, it might be labour, capital. When there is more pressure put on labour, for example, more pressure put on labour, um, workers are going to demand higher wages. And that's going to increase prices, that's going to increase costs, that's going to increase inflation. So, when we are close to full employment levels of output, there is more pressure put on the existing factors of production, which causes uh, upward pressure on prices, thus increasing inflation in the economy. That's fine. And for trade position, the way you work out trade position, you go to inflation. Whatever's going on with inflation, you can make a link to exports. So here, inflation is increasing, which makes exports in the economy less competitive. Therefore, the demand for exports is likely to fall, therefore reducing um, exports in the economy and worsening the trade position. With aggregate demand, we can also make a link to imports. So as a result of the economy getting richer, of uh, people in the economy getting richer because the material living standards is going up, People are going to demand more stuff. They've got more incomes, they want more stuff now. So they're going to probably going to demand more imports because a lot of that stuff can't be produced in the domestic economy. So when there is more growth in the economy, there is also more demand for imports, which again is going to reduce the current composition. That effect is much smaller, I would say, than the inflation one. So your primary place to go is the inflation impact, and that has probably the biggest weight, although so does, you know, this is also quite a big effect as well. Right, let's do the same thing for long run aggregate supply shift. So an aggregate supply shift to the right, what's going on? Well, have a look now. You pause the video now and have a go. What's going on to each of the four macro indicators and why? See if you can do that.
Right, let's have a look, shall we? So what's going on with growth? You can see growth is increasing from Y1 to Y2. So yeah, there is an increase in growth. Happy days. What's going on with unemployment? Unemployment is falling. Hopefully now you can explain why. Inflation in the economy is falling. Great. And our trade position is actually improving. If you've gone to inflation to work that out, you're actually doing quite well there. So trade position uh, improves. So the explanation, same reason for growth increasing. There is more demand now for goods and services. There is an extension of aggregate demand, isn't there? So there is more demand for goods and services. Firms respond to that by producing more output, which increases economic growth. When there is more growth, there is more demand for labour, because labour is a derived demand, derived from the demand for goods and services. Therefore, when growth increases, the demand for labour increases, reducing unemployment. Perfect. Inflation, in this sense, it reduces uh, because there is less competition for goods and services. So when aggregate, demand, ag aggregate supply shifts to the right, you need to explain the reduction in inflation in terms of reduced competition for goods and services. So now because there is reduced competition for goods and services, overall that leads to reduced cost push inflationary pressures. And trade position improves because now exports become relatively more competitive as the price level of the economy actually falls. That's what explain okay? You do that, that is going to be properly amazing analysis. So if the question is asking you about growth only, then you'd isolate, you'd isolate the effect on growth. If the question is asking about growth and unemployment, you would isolate both of those. If the question is asking you about national economic performance, or if it's about macroeconomic performance, you need to mention all four. That's very important as well. So bear that in mind. The more you talk about the better, as long as it's relevant to the question. You've also got your standard evaluation points down here, which we've mentioned over and over again in my previous videos. I hope that helps you with analysis. Make sure you nail that. Do that in depth and you'll be great. You'll be scoring high marks in the exam. All the best. See you next time. Thank you very much.